to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right, I ask the Secretary Treasurer to uh, call the roll. Scott Howitz, President. Here. William Pell, Secretary of Treasury. I'm here. Edward J. Warner, Jr. President. Ann Walker. President. Here. President. Here. President. And William Parrish. President. We're all here. All right, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Monday, February 13th, 2023, 9.30 a.m. meeting here at Town Hall. Here on a nice second floor of the Town Hall. Um, and we have... Um, Couple of discussions on, and then we're going to get right into it because we have a very, very busy day, and busy agenda, a lot going on. Um, there's a discussion about uh, the Article Seven, Section Forty Seven, uh, regarding permit modifications and renewals. This was about the stamp plans. We've been having this uh, conversation back and forth, and it's an evolution with this um, with this uh, regulation. Mark, you want to opine on uh, where you? Uh, where we ended up with this? Sure. I think after our last um, public session, we, we had the trustees had come to the conclusion um, after I uh, provided some advice and we listened to a gentleman who came in and spoke with us that the, the section as written did not need to be amended. Right. I think we got to take it a, a little further, though, on this, though, because I think there were some questions concerning at what point in time a modification would be requiring, you know, an already approved permit that was requesting to be modified at what point in time if those plans were accepted prior? Yeah. Without the stamp, that, right. at what point would the trustee board make the determination that now, you know, it's, it's too big of a change in the plan and it's, <coughs> it's got to go back? Or stamp versus it's it's not well, gonna right. Change. What we determined, and I have a handout on a bit related issue as well. It's five of these for the trustees regarding some proposed language with regard to specifically modifications versus right. renewals. Go okay. okay. But as to the the stamps, Get a copy for Joe. The the determination was made that if a survey. We'll make a copy, I guess. Yeah. Mark, you have one more copy? Um, I have my copy here. There should be five. I want to have Joe give, take a look at Joe. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have another copy. Okay. We'll right, get we'll one. We'll get them. I'll get them. This em. is a work session. We're not, we're not, yeah. uh, we're going to have to take some time to review this anyway. I mean, this has been uh, through several sessions of, uh, conversation here at the board and it was good that uh, that Floyd Carrington came and gave a bunch of really good information for the board's consideration I, I, I thank Floyd for uh, for taking his time to come in on his own to uh, you know express the, uh, the importance of respecting surveys and what you can and cannot do legally uh, on a, a legal document Yes, right. so and we de we determined that if a survey was altered in any way and changed then it would require uh, another um, stamp before from the, the trust survey to, to right. remain being a and valid document. Right, and they would mark it that there had been a change and then stamp it themselves. Right. Short the of, of that, the two, if the initial plans were not changed and submitted with a stamp, a new stamp was not necessary. And and the, there was a code amendment to reflect that. Okay. Do you want to discuss? Yeah, absolutely. And this is a, a separate issue, but a, a newer issue with regard to permit modifications and renewals and whether or not we need a code amendment. 47 section A3 mentions the word alter, which would cover any repair um, to a dock. Um, so there, there may not need to be an amendment. Uh, however, if you go to the next page, uh, 47F, specifically 47F1, um, the section marked in conjunction with the application. It says, in conjunction with the application for work, the trustees require the following for all new work, reconstruction, and replacement of existing structures. Um, and, and we could clarify that further, although I don't think it's necessary uh, with the language that I'm proposing on page 3. <coughs> Mr. 
which would read in conjunction with the application for work and then add the language including applications for modifications but excluding applications for renewals the trustees require require the following for all new work reconstruction and replacement so only the middle part would be the addition uh, again I, I don't know if it's necessary because the, the article 647 a3 already includes the word alter um, so, so any which change would be in a original, modification not yes. renewal so you may in not one way or another it would be a change in the original structure right. so with that being done we we'd need all the proper paperwork stamp and everything so that when, the, when George or whoever is our inspector goes to inspect the project, he has a piece of paper, he has a survey, and he has all the uh, you know site plans that. And then exactly for a, for a modification, uh, not for a renewal. Though. Right, right. They just needed no. more time to do the work. Yes. They already got a permit yeah. for. They would not. Um, so it's really up to the trustees whether you want to keep the section as is. I think it's probably covered with the word alter or add that additional language regarding modifications and excluding renewals. I mean, it's, uh, you're just restating it in the... Uh, yeah, I think so. So it's I don't repetitive, think it's necessary. right? sir. <laughs> Could always revisit it down the road if yeah. you choose to. Well, we just want to make sure what, whatever plans are submitted and the project is done, <coughs> that the inspector has it and it's the same. It matches yes. up. Yes. Yep. So it's enforceable if it's not done to, uh, you know, our code <coughs> or the plans. It's enforceable in court. Right, and I believe this section gives the trustees the clear discretion to not require new stamps for renewals, but to require them on modifications. Okay. Which is the issue. That's great. I'm going to get my phone to not be ringing. Dropped it one too many times. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll review this and we'll make a determination, Mark. But okay. I, I mean, I feel confident that you say that it's already covered in the alter section of it. You know. Um, all right, Trustee Warner. Yes. We have brought uh, its uh, boat lifts and potential regulations. This has been discussed, I would say, for the last eight or ten years. Uh, boat lifts within the town. We have uh, permitted them or given permits for them in specific areas um, and there are other areas where they uh, have been placed in with the help of our permit and review and looking at some of the prohibited areas it, it, it's in these areas. So well, what I'd like to do is the board to take a look at them um, come up with any thoughts being that we have new types of boat lifts. They don't lift the uh, boats up. They're not as obtrusive on the water, they don't have these giant pilings and they don't lift the boats up as high as they used to. Uh, more, it's almost like having them at a dock uh, when the tide rises and falls. They're not five or six or seven feet out of the water. So I'd like everybody to give a little bit of thought and input on this and I'd like to uh, have a discussion and maybe move to legalizing boat lifts because there are some good, uh, you know, things that come of this. A lot of times the boats that are used or, or on these boat lifts, they don't have anti-fouling paint, which eventually ends up in the water and causes, you know, you know, you know, degradation of the marine environment, uh, shellfish and eelgrass. And uh, it, it's a way of protecting your vessel during a storm. It lifts it up out of harm's way. Um, and it's, it's a lot of the areas, well, not, well, several of the areas already have these boat lifts. Uh, of one type or another, but I'd like to uh, really, you know, hone in on a boat lift that wouldn't lift the boat up as high, and also uh, legalize them, and basically throughout the whole entire town, come up with a set of parameters that would work uh, to, to do that. What are you thinking as far as water? Um, the water depth. I mean, it, at a floating dock, you have 30 inches of water. So, in, in place of maybe a floating dock. Uh, somebody might ask for a boat lift. So I would say 30 inches of water would be a, a starting point for discussion. James, I don't know if you want to have any... It's on the back of the... Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, the, okay. there were so some... The yeah. So two and a half feet. Yeah. Up in a moment. Yes. And it's going to be two and a half feet above the high water is the maximum height of the boat. Correct. So, you know, the, it's not as a, you know, 
it looks aesthetically better. It protects the vessel, and you know it's you know in some places instances we can you know get rid of a floating dock, which would cause or have less shading on the bottom. So um, you know, and, and I think it's something uh, I, I think it's something that's you know already happening in many areas for many twenty or plus years. And some of the older boat lifts are very, you know, they have, you know, 12 inch pilings and the, the boats are actually four or five feet above mean high water, which, you know, basically, you know, you're looking at your neighbors looking at your boat. So I want to, I want to uh, come up with more of a consistent management uh, protocol and, uh, and something that would work, you know, in the whole town, not just individual areas. Had the um, pushback about boat lifts been primarily because of aesthetics for the neighbors in addition to concerns about the environment? Um, I think originally the town uh, the trustees were just not in favor of boat lifts, but they have been haphazardly approved throughout the town. Um, I'll give you for instance, uh, there's a in um, um, what was it in uh, Red Creek, Red Creek oh, Pond, we permitted a boat lift in there, and it's a solar stream boat lift, and it's a, a pontoon boat lift, and it's almost like a jet ski dock. It's very low profile. The boat goes up there. It lifts up. It's run by solar, and it has vegetable oil for hydraulics. So we approved it because thinking that the, the gentleman doesn't paint his boat so that anti-fouling paint isn't going to get into the environment using vegetable oil as hydraulic oil and, a, and a, a solar power would be something and it's you really can't tell that there's a boat lift there because it, 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 it's such lo so low profile so we need to do some research and we have been given quite a few uh, documents as far as boat lifts to look at over the over my tenure on on, on the trustees so I just want to move I want if the board has a sentiment of moving forward I want to Move it forward and uh, come up with a you know a plan so that we can apply. I mean, this would get, you know obviously uh, require public hearing. No, I no. We already had a public hearing and we denied a couple of boat lifts in Smith's Creek, uh, and and some of these areas I think would be appropriate for a boat lift and actually have boat lifts around the parameter of Smith's Creek. So that's why I want everybody on the board to be able to you know look at this you know. So you're saying we would we need another. Public well, I, I want to come up with, with an actual set of parameters oh, yeah. and plans that we would all support as far as boat lifts and then propose it in a public hearing format so that people in, in the public can give us their input and then we can, uh, if it's successful, craft a document uh, to put in our blue book that we would allow boat lifts throughout the town. Okay, so it needs a little more discussion. Yeah. Yes, it, it right. does. Okay. It, it's good. <clears throat> Thanks, Ted. Okay. I'd say if the trustees can review what's proposed, and if you have any additions, then we can talk about the next sure. session, and then schedule a public hearing after that, if there's no changes. Right. Yes. Are boat lifts ever on moorings? Um, okay. Only a jet ski float would be on a mooring, right. which would be almost a boat lift because you, you run the jet ski up and it lifts it out of the water. These boat lifts would actually have hydraulics or electric, you know, to lift the boats up. And, um, you know, there, there are boats as large as, uh, I believe, 40 feet that have uh, are on boat lifts, which are legalized. So, okay. so that's why I want to, you know, go through the whole process. Okay. All right. So, Great. okay. Thank you, Ed. We'll, we'll do, do a review. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So we can get right into general permit applications if you guys are, are ready for that. Yep. I have 11 Ramana Drive, Hampton Bays. I see Billy Mack is here from First Coastal. Hello. Billy. Hello. 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 Hey, Billy. Good morning, Billy. Hey, we did a field trip. Oh, good. That was my first question. We question. did a field trip. Yeah, this is a site that's been inundated for the last several uh, decades, and um, we're looking to propose a simple rock uh, protective structure right at the high water line. One rock? Rock structure. It's a simple rock. 
Yeah, you multiple rocks. Yeah. You definitely but have to do something there. Consistent with what's been approved um, right. before. He's got uh, the area staked out, James, and I went there. Okay. And we did a review. We looked at all the flags and, and whatnot. Yeah. And um, we, we learned a lot about the site, and we also found, you know, more, more questions to ask. But, but James, and I'll, James and I will deal with that right. later, right? Um, as we go down there and we take a look at it. But I mean, it, it, you have to do something there because it is getting beat up pretty yeah. bad. And I see you're going to remove that timber. That timber there, oh, that yeah. timber stuff that's there. You're going to get rid of that and you're going to do, you know, a much better project than, than what is there. Yeah. Um, get rid of that pipe. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that the, over the decades the owner has been doing. This is going to go. Self -help, yeah. which, uh, you could use native stones. Didn't we give a permission? Native stone. Not yeah. shop, right? Exactly. Like Billy, wasn't there a permit from our board re pretty recently to do a project or part of a project here? Not on this property. Hmm. Um, I see there's rocks there already. Yeah. Well, sometimes these people are engaging in. Uh, they did a little self help. Self help, as they as they call it. But now I can, you know, it's good that you're coming in because now you, you got a, a good plan I think going on here from what I can see. I mean, you know, James, our environmental analyst. We were there. I mean, we both kind of thought that it made sense with what you had going on there. You are you are getting beat up pretty good. What's the difference in elevation between the beach and above the rocks? Uh, it's about two feet. Right. It, you can see those. It's pretty shallow. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, you see those timbers. There. Okay. And those timbers are coming out. Yes. Okay. As is the the rock that's there, and the, I think there's some. Uh, Polypropylene bags, the sandbags. That's right. They get the sandbags here too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And that little curb, the timber curb. Uh, yeah, that's all going to go yep. as indicated. Yep. So, so are, is this revetment going to be covered with sand? We're going to cover it with sand. Yep. And are you going to plant, plant it with it? beach grass? Yes. Isn't the northerly part of the project they already have a vegetated shoreline? It has Phragmites and some. It's got Phragmites, yeah. yeah. And some, you know, you know, uh, marsh or meadow basically a uh, bog there so you yeah you could reconstruct that behind the we could rocks um, in a way that you know I'm, probably what I'm thinking is that this type of a project is going to be almost like a, the living shoreline but you're utilizing some kind of type of structure to break the wave energy and allow the structure to behind it to flourish mm -hmm. we're hoping that um, on top of the structure and landward of the structure the native vegetation that we plant, which is the Cape American beach grass, will do quite well because it'll have that protection. Also, there is some, um, it's not very evident. James, can you scroll up a little? But there is hints of spartina grass that are trying it, to grow there. The, and that's what we're hoping yeah. will start populating. Yeah, that's as well. what I'm looking at. That's because you got the yeah. wave fetch all the way from the Pancor Bridge on an easterly wind. It's pretty substantial. Which we've had several. Uh, very strong storms this mm -hmm. uh, winter. And it's only February. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed when you were there, <coughs> but the flooding goes all the way back, um, you know, under the pool that's there, now under we, the deck. No, we acknowledge, uh, James yeah. and I were there, we, we spent a bunch of time there. You, you, you have to do something, and I yeah. think that you're, you're taking a... Uh, so this project's going to be done in a way that the public will let some, either a lower tide would uh, still acquire pass and repass, oh, right? Yeah. No doubt. This isn't sure. going to interfere with the public's use of the beach there. No way. Yeah, not in yeah. that area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no way low tide, the, the beach is nice and wide. It's a very yeah. shallow area, as you know. Yes. So. Yes. And to the north and to the south, there are bulkheads on both sides, right? Correct. Correct. So yeah. are you, it's hard to tell from the drawings, are you proposing the revetment to be seaward of the bulkheads or it's, to be in the Well, it's water? right on the, the high water line, essentially. Um, okay. The bulkheads are farther seaward. Yeah, I mean, when you go there and you look at his flags, you can see, I mean, you, you guys have done a really good job, in my opinion, at trying to address this in the uh, best possible manner. Yeah, we pulled it back. They did pull it know, quite back. Of to what's there protecting and also what's on the adjacent properties. I hope it works. Yeah. Because you, you are getting beat up pretty good over there. Yeah, it's, a t it's one of the few properties that has zero protection and, right. it, mm -hmm. and it's showing, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Just trying to think if there are any other greener parts of it that could be substituted well, the, or you, added. Well, replacing the, the Phragmite with native will yeah. go a long way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you did a good job. Okay. 
What That's about good. maintaining the coverage of the sand on the rocks going forward? Uh, on the, the seaward edge, the most seaward edge will probably get exposed pretty, you know, on, on, a, on a significant storm. But what we found landward, which is where we're going to be planting a lot of the native vegetation, will mm -hmm. do quite well. And that well, vegetation will hold that sand. Well, do we want a special condition in there that the rocks will be kept covered? I mean, it's going to be a constant, it's going to be like a constant battle, I think, no matter On what. On the seaward side, I think that's going to be tough. It's, it's going to be a nonstop. It'll it's, be nonstop. It's, it's I mean, too I, volatile of an area. Once a year. I would think everything from the rock revetment landward, where you've got the rocks to protect the shore and the structure or whatever you plant behind there would be, that would be the area that we probably look the closest at for, you know, either sand maintenance or revegetation because yeah. you might need a couple <coughs> planting cycles in order for the grass to take root and to establish itself. Mm -hmm. But I think once you have the rocks and, and or our structure there that would break up the wave energy, I think it would work pretty good. Because I, I'm familiar with the area and, and there's right behind it is, you know, a, a stand of Phragmites mm -hmm. and a, other Thick. grasses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think getting the beach grass to establish itself and thrive yeah. versus yeah. being, you know, as part time. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's specifically calling for beach grass. Yeah, that's beach the grass. upland part that'll yeah. do it is, better. Yeah. You know, in trying to stop in that surge and trying to stabilize what it is that you have there, it's a difficult spot that you're in. Yeah. You're trying to utilize, you know, what you have in, in your tool belt aside from putting a bulkhead in like other mm -hmm. people have to protect their property. So I'm, I'm hoping that this can work out for you because you definitely have an issue that has to be addressed. Is there an access point between the house over the structure and and the, is is it going to be a walkway there or some kind? It's not of a permit, is it? No, um, because the, if you're going to put rocks here, you're basically going to put a wall, and I don't think you want to be walking across yeah, that wall. Um, what we are planning to do is once this is done, the the property owner would like to go and file a permit for a, a dock of some sort or a walkway just okay. to. You want to see what it looks for us. It's yeah. better to get it, you got to get your problem stabilized first, exactly. in my opinion. Exactly. I, you, I would right. do the same. You got to yeah. get it stabilized because you have a problem there. Yep. Yeah. But to, to your point, yes, we're, that's that's absolutely what they're uh, considering. Yeah, I mean, I I'm very familiar with the area, and it's you know, it's between okay. two points that are you know, okay, have yeah. bulkheads. So. Ready for the next one. Good. You good? Okay. Thank you. you good? Is everybody good? I'm good. Mr. Parrish, you good? Everybody's very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, Billy. Next one is a modification renewal for 11 Shinnecock Road. This is for the Shinnecock Shores Association. Um, he could have. Billy could have stayed for this. Do you need him up? Billy. It's for the coastal. For the coastal. Need you. I don't think it is you. Billy, for that last one, we just need the stamp plans. Yeah, it is you. Yes. Kelly, it's got Kelly Hoffman here. Okay. This is a uh, it's a maintenance dredge project for the Dolphin Marlin Tarpon Barracuda Whiting Canals. Uh, they have a maintenance dredge uh, due to the scope and nature of the dredging project. The applicant proposes to pay the dimensional fees for the trustee permit per individual canal. Um, just you're looking to modify this. It's changing from. It from um, to a clamshell, clam yes. right? That's all yep. you. That's all you're doing is you're just going to clamshell. So I, I'm not opposed to that. There's no issue with that. It's a simpler it's just, way. It's to a simple. It's a simple <laughs> modification. And so. what's what's the um, reason for that? Uh, I believe that was a uh, request from the DEC to go to clamshell on that, and right. it, it works out with the type of equipment that will be there. Right. So a lot of these consistent. canals. But that's what they do to do these little maintenance dredge. It's just a lot easier to just handle reach it in with and grab with it. a longer reach. Yeah, okay. right. So you're difference. just tightening up the methodology in terms you're going to be doing this dredging. It's absolutely needed. So I think it should move forward. And where does the spoil go? Uh, I think it's dedicated site up upland behind the bulkhead. Right, and a lot of the times yeah. they take it to a DEC approved site. They'll put it in containers and it's yep. out of there because there's not a lot of you don't have tremendous amount. They have to get rid of it someplace it's else. very it's sandy very right. clean material right have yeah. you been looking or been paying attention to the beneficial use of dredge spoils at all in any other areas sure we right. um I wish we would start to yeah do that. we really like to combine it with some type of restoration 
either upland, even mm -hmm. even if it's simply upland or on a, a roaded shoreline. Yeah. Not many of the projects that we're dredging from have, uh, you know, a roaded Beach shoreline right. that we can marry up with a project. But right. it has whenever that we been, can. Has that been done or is that being done at all that you see with DEC? Uh, or anywhere in the state, because I know it's being done in other locations, but I think that we're behind the curve well, a little. Well, it's not just not us. Not in this, not in this no, case, no, because but just looking forward. Well, I mean, in some instances, the contractors will take it back to a site that they have, and they will let it, they'll let it dry out. Mm -hmm. And then they'll then yeah. get a permit for repurposing that material. You know, the applicants come in. They, they can only keep so much on site. They negotiate with the contractor that's doing the job. They're taking it to a specific site. Obviously, if there's a lot of you know volatile compounds in it, then it's mm, very expensive to go else. someplace yeah. else, and you'd be talking about a different conversation. But if it's beach compatible, which it typically is. Right, then it's drying out. It's going to some place, and then they'll they'll work that out. But that's what those contractors yeah. do, and I'm sure it does happen uh, more times than, than you even know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just it, you know, it's always hard to try to get Mary. that dredge material right. when you need it because it never overlaps but mm -hmm. like you said a lot of the um, excavating contractors will store this for specific use mm -hmm. can't really use it for like making concrete or anything like that because of salt content but for shoreline stabilization projects we've been able to right. mm -hmm. utilize Other things mm -hmm. we're not involved at that part of the equation you know we're permitting it and then they're, they're negotiating their deals with their contractors and then they're following the DECs our protocols and then they're they're doing their thing. We're not in you know if it's our project like something that we're doing, you know then you can do it. Yeah. In, right. In other areas though it's being used for marsh restoration and that's a really interesting concept, especially if the property or the site mm -hmm. was was uh when the DEC gets involved, they, they have a uh, philosophy of keeping it in the system, which yeah. is usually along that shoreline or in that proximity. Right. Once that material is put in the truck and trucked it away, there's another whole layer of DEC becomes hazardous material. It needs to be looked at for VOCs, and then it adds a lot of cost to the that material. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we did a project um, with uh, the county uh, at uh, Foster Creek. Creek. We dredged eight, nine thousand cubic yards of material, let it dry out on the property owner. And then it was used <coughs> on a property north in Forces mm -hmm. Creek for shoreline restoration because there was a low silt bulkhead place there and it was Perfect. planted and it's it that it's that project well. has flourished. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's so good, that's a good th there uh, are combination. Which which we all try to do the research. Like I'll give you an example when we were doing a, a dredging project uh, or a potential dredging project in Shinnecock Bay, talking to you and uh, Aram about North Sea Beach Colony and moving the material down there. Yeah. Because it is Great. in the marine system and I think it would be beach compatible, so which mm -hmm. which the material has to be with that site. So but we've always tried to do these projects with a future beach restoration in in, totally. in sight. Right. Yeah. But but for this application for what you got going no. on here the modification is fully Pretty acceptable simple. very <laughs> okay and yep. we, we, I think we're good to go All with right. that Billy. Thanks. Thank, Thank you Billy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, next one I have is uh, uh, Marina Brandt. Real Eight. quick, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Scott. Um, the application was taken in incorrect on this one. It's actually Bayview Drive, Village of Quag, not Bayview Drive, West Hampton. So that's the big change in our system, but so the, the name is incorrect. Um, we still have the proper documents and everything, but wanted to make you aware of that. Yeah, I just, I, I think that, does anybody here representing this application? Nobody's, nobody's here representing this application. Do you want to discuss it a little, or do you just want well, to I, I, it, it, we'll just do it another day? Well, it just, it doesn't, I don't see where there's a, uh, in the Blue Book regulations, I don't, first of all, it just says to add an additional section of floating dock X and one piling to existing approved dock. But if you look at the regulations that we all follow, it, it looks to be all out of spec. So I think that they, this, this can't, can't go anywhere right now. I think we need to have a conversation with the uh, 
with the applicant. So because they already have a catwalk kind of floating dock. Right, right, right. So add an additional. Right. right. So our regulations are clear. I think we we're going to go move on to the next one, and we'll have a conversation <clears throat> with the uh, with the applicant. I was hoping they would be here, but we will we will reach out and we'll deal with that. Okay. All right. So Trustee Pell. I have 64 down East Lane. Uh, Jim Walker into Science. Step forward, please. Hello there, Jim. Hey, Jim. How's it going? Hi, Jim. Good morning, Jim. This file's getting pretty thicker by the day. What's that? This file on this permit gets thicker by the day. Well, the village has uh, slowed down everything. But uh, for the board uh, information, uh, Martha Riker is here representing uh, her client who lives next door, whose dock I also got approved uh, five or six years ago. It was originally Fred Havemeyer's property. 64 Down East Lane, uh, we're back uh, to see the Board of Trustees because DEC asked us to change the drop platform to four foot by six foot exactly, so we changed the plans, we submitted them, and you ha had issued a permit. So we just have to amend it? You, you would be asked to amend a permit. Is it, okay. is it the size of the drop platform? It's, it's a little bit smaller. Small. They they wanted us. To, uh, we we tried to uh, provide a drop platform that you could put a kayak in the water, uh, more practically. Uh, but the DEC asked us to revise it, make it narrower and um, more precisely four foot by six feet. So we did, okay. and uh, we are still in front of the um, the village. Um, the village has had a hard time uh, approving this project, so we are proceeding again tomorrow. While well, everybody is at dinner for Valentine's Day, I will be at the Zoning Board of the so do you want to Sorry. pushing a wetlands <laughs> yeah. permit. Do you want to submit the new the new thing? I submitted it. Um, okay. so it's it's into you. Um, I saw that. You have it. It's not very exciting. We made the four foot by six foot platform precisely four foot by six feet, so that it meets the okay. the current DC. So we, we go forward with that. I have an Army Corps permit. I have a Department of State okay. permit. I'm finished with the DEC. So just us in the village. We're bringing you up to speed. Okay, I have no problem with it. Just. And yeah. the access here for both properties for their. Um, Kayaks or paddle boards is fine in this narrow. Yeah, so it's been a high we, tide. There's so no water in this. No water. It goes Only dry at low tide. It goes goes dry at low tide. Martha, Martha's been in the the creek. I know. I never. Are you participating in this whole thing, Martha? You need to. <coughs> if you if you're is she participating in this? She can come up. I, I, if you're gonna be hello. if you're here and you have something connected with this, I think. It's it's better that you're on the record. So the she's board. the only person I know that went in that creek. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you're here and you're referencing her, I think she should be part of the I record. Think, here. I think. I think. Her, and you made I think it her out. Is, it's endless mud bottom. Uh, <laughs> it was terrifying. Luckily, I brought my husband, and he handed me a kayak paddle so that I could, I, because I started sinking in. <laughs> and I already, heard, I already heard this whole story before. So. <laughs> you did. So, so you for this. You for this. This is. Yeah. Um, you know, my client's concerns are just about the navigability. Um, one of the things that over the process is Jim flipped the drop platform to go a little bit further towards the east, which I we both felt alleviated any issues, and now the platform's just being made smaller, so I don't have any specific objections That's to okay. this. So let's push yeah. We're going to launch a kayak here, and, and the board should be aware that the guy has a mooring permit in Hetty Creek. He is the guy that kept a little Boston Whaler at his um, uh, property, which is the old DuPont estate. And I, I don't remember the, the, the street address on Meadow Lane, but he's the guy that had the little yeah. Boston Whaler at uh, Munns Point. Oh, okay. okay. So you check all the boxes here. Yeah. It's been yep. there forever. Yeah, okay. in, in the little pond in Munns Point. He knows where it is. Yeah. <laughs> I fish, I fish here, so I'm familiar with this area. Well, his moorings now in Hetty Creek, because okay. you gave him an, a we permit transfer of move, move. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I could just add one last thing. My client's concern was that a boat might be permanently berthed there, but I think the village is working on yeah, there's that. There's no way you can get a boat up there. You find that out. Yeah, so it's very shallow. <laughs> yeah. Again, she's the only person I know that went in the creek. Is any crabs in there? Well, then she's and qualified to comment on it. <laughs> <laughs>
the only one qualified. <laughs> no, Billy, that's where the white bait hangs out this time yeah. of year. So I think we're all good with it. it I'm so. yeah. If you're all good with it, I'm all good yeah, with it. I think it's all, it's checks all the boxes of what we need, and you, you, know, you have to resolve your issue with the village, whatever that is. But for our boxes, it seems as if you're okay. And you the next one, with it. we have 56. For that one, we need the damp plants. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Martha. Martha. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you as well. Thank you for taking a walk. Martha. Yeah. Martha was on the other side of the table for a while. Um, Jim, yeah, not much. We just need damp plants <laughs> for that one. Four, Always bring a friend. Six and four, right? <laughs> and a paddle. And a paddle. Now, um, the next one is a, is a renewal. And you have stamp plants. And it's a simple <coughs> renewal, so. Which one are we talking about now? 56. So it's just a renewal with no changes? Yes. No changes. And we already have what we need? You have what you need. So? So that's all the whole on. What's it for? Bulkhead. Okay. The guy's name is Trader Skip. And we got permits for the guy. Then we got renewals for the guy. And we went through the permit process over and over again. I said, listen, I'm not going to do it again. Yes. I'll get a renewal. You build the bulkhead, or you can go talk to somebody it, else. Yeah. It's so it expired, so you guys did give a permit. It just expired, so it's technically a new application. Now right. It's a new application. And new application, but he's go, he's going to build the bulkhead this time. But the, yeah. but the specs are exactly as exactly the prior same. approved. Yes. Yeah. And you, this time you have stamp plans. Engineer plans. And okay. Is 56 is the right address? It's just showing Marsh. 56 is the right address. Okay. Oh, there, there's a bulkhead there in the dock, and we're replacing the bulkhead in the dock. So it's vacant. It's vacant. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's but I did have a question on that. Properties in Colesburg are um, vacant. The, the, when he puts the, the float out, the width of that canal, it's pretty, pretty now out there. Yeah. He put a boat there. Meet the tests. We're we're two point seven to four point seven and, feet. And, and when he yeah. got distance to the other shoreline. Distance to the other shoreline. And I ten no feet off idea. the boundary line. I didn't do this project initially on Brant It me. doesn't show the distance, distance across. So you have you have that I scale. Can, I can let you know. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Just have to meet the uh yeah. the third the one third. Yeah. So Please. Bill, we'll send it to you. Um, and also he'd been bringing his float up through the neighbor's grass and killing the grass. You can see the path. You should put a condition on your permit. Yeah, it can't be. Store it has to be a stored up land, but it can't it drag it over the neighbor's grass. Um, so you, you know where this is. That's up in there. There's clams up in there. Yes. There's clams up in there. You know where it is. Yes. Well, we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send you the width of the canal. Okay. Uh, if you want a condition of the, the float. Stored seasonally. Stored seasonally, but it can't be dragged up on a neighbor's property. Should, uh, you should put that in all your permits. Stored seasonally in an upland location beyond yeah. in the grass. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, already yeah. it's already there. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. people have to abide by it. But he has to, can't, he can't be dragging it up over a kiln of grass. I got you. You can see the trenches. We must to abide by the agreements. The next one, Sabrina. So we're gonna hold that. You hold that until he gets out of the information. Yeah. Is this you too, Jim? No. Sabrina. 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 Two eighty nine. Right oh, okay. She's the boss. Two eighty nine Noyak LLC. Yeah. She's the boss at Interscience. Hello. Hello. She, Hello. she didn't know. Good morning, everyone. You're the boss. Good morning. <laughs> the boss. Um, before I begin, I had sent re digitally revised plans on Thursday before I saw that I was on the agenda. I don't know if they made it your way. Um, the plans have essentially been revised to take off the kayak rack. I okay. have extra copies if mm. everybody wants them or if you want to talk well, about the next June. Uh, Survey says. They might have gone to Nick. I sent them yeah, to Nick and Jamie was TC. Yeah, but I have, yeah. Yes. We have copies. Right there, Okay. 
have one more, please? Oh, yeah, of course. Because yeah. we had to step one in. I have one. You don't have the two eight ones. Can we cut this back? Because there's like no them. water there. And you go out and um, it's the same depth for a length of time. Right. Here on the soundings at 1.2, we tried to locate it in the place that was deepest. It's 60 yeah. feet from mean high water. But you want it cut back? Yeah, if you could. OK, what do you want it cut back to? What do you think, Ed? Go back maybe to like 0.6. Yeah, I mean, it's Point. that gives that gives you over the, the over the line into the water. OK, and 0.6, you want the end of the you want the drop platform yes. to end yeah. it for. OK. Yeah, because there's no need to be way at that far because nothing changes. OK. You don't mind. I'd be happy for the environment. OK. Yeah, and that would give you access to the, to the pond. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's what the handrails are going to look like. Yes, it'll be um, five quarter inch by six inch top rail with a five quarter inch by four inch side rail, and then a vinyl clad stainless steel wire in between. And that'll be a leaf mulch patch path down to. Do the they really need the handrails there? Um, I think it was for well, you're safety. Yeah, so you're, not five, you're four foot plus yeah. off, it looks right. Like, right? Yeah. It's high. Yeah, you're high. So if somebody falls off that. Yeah. I guess you should leave them. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, right. You just right. don't, you just so you don't want to have all these spindles. So it looks yeah. like you're kind of minimalist there. Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. did a good job. Yeah. Let's hear about that. <laughs> She's the boss. I told you. <laughs> This is like criticizing too much. <laughs> <laughs> is there language about treated material? Um, I have it on the description of work. It's not on the plans, um, indicating that it'll be light penetrating and constructed with non-treated wood. But I can have that oh, like added to the plan. Open decking. You know, it should be flow through. Flow through or free flow. It's fiberglass open grading decking on the fourth page. It's all described there. Yeah, where's right, the, yeah. where's the, uh, the cover right, sheet right. indicates all this? No, it yeah. has to be no. put on the cover sheet. It is on the cover sheet, but I will. I have to revise it to take off the kayak rack and then uh, <coughs> language about shortening the dock. Yeah. Yeah, so also on your plants. Right. So you, we need everything to match. Okay. Right, and then obviously the final approved plan's got to be the state plan. Yes. So James, so we'll hold that waiting pending. Hold it pending you getting all this stuff. All information. Okay, and then I'll come back for a work session, yes. or you um, might not have to. If you, if you, I mean, if you comply with that, I mean, you're yeah. always welcome to come to the work session. If you, if you comply, <laughs> thank with you. That, okay. it's gotta come back to work. It's gotta yeah. come. It's yeah. a matter yes. of whether okay. she's gotta come. Yeah. Okay. You know, what has I mean? to come you can, if you're the okay. boss, you can delegate. To <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be the thing to do. You, you might really be celebrating Valentine's Day, though. I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, I will make those right. changes and resubmit them. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have an application for uh, Doreen Farrell, Six Cedar Drive, Hampton Bays. Thank you. Thanks. Is the applicant here? Did we hear from? James, did we hear? You, you want to hold this? You don't have the application? No, I want to hold this because we originally did a review over this and it has issues with the uh, you so know, the setbacks on the extended property lines and we shortened the dock to 55 feet by 4 feet and uh, subsequently there was a ramp and a float that was added on without a permit, which is... This the neighbors were complaining about? No, there's no... It's in uh, Carmen Point Co, but so if they're not here. So then just hold it. I'm going to hold it. Yes. Hold it. Yes. Move on to your next. Uh, yep. Next <coughs> um, the next one is uh, 50 Little Neck Road LLC, 50 Little Neck Road, Schnickock Hills. Uh, this is with um, Jim Walker and Inner Science. <laughs> Again. I see you came up with that divorce ship without a captain. <laughs> this is uh, Henry Hildreth. And for what it's worth, we have finished with the Army Corps. 
the Department of State, and we've made progress here, and we have shown on the current plans exactly what's required at the Army Corps and the, and the DDC. It is the last time I was here, we were going to show a drop platform at 100 feet. So yes. that's where we are. I've done what Ed uh, and I discussed at that particular time, and this project's ready for you guys to approve. Give the overhead shot. Property owner is going to complain if you make him go get an engineer, uh, engineer drawings because he's been in this process for a long time. But, uh, well, sure. there's no water there, and we're trying to accommodate uh, a dock that has been there without a permit for many years. The, and the, the original dock was permitted. I got with, it. With a float? No. Oh, the floats are illegal as could be. Yeah, so this would. <laughs> But this was Sorry, you Ian, I, I'm honest to a fault. <laughs> well, you, but it's what it is. <laughs> you're going to acquire, you know, two feet of water, which would float a small Boston whaler, and it, it would be appropriate in, in the area. So, um, yeah. I, I think it's an improvement over people having illegal floats. Um, we, we've tried to uh, work with the property owner to give them something that they would uh, agree to and install and abide by the permits. But you're not going to put a condition that it can only have frost and whale, right? No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what, what. That's funny. And so is like there a channel along part of there, or is it down further? No, this there's no this channel offshore here. It's all pretty hard bottom, pretty so. flat bottom there. Yeah. It's in Fort Pond. This is what it looks like right now. Yeah, those those loading docks are totally out of spec. Yeah, it's too muddy. Well, there's three of them there now. Well, they've multiplied. <laughs> Having three floats on a, on a bay bottom is a bad idea. Yeah. It, it, what, what we're trying to do is give the uh, property owner something that he can live with and enjoy without having illegal improvements. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best way to approach most of these uh, projects. Yeah. Um, and, and this winter, that whole entire structure was completely dry there, so with the winter tide, so. It would be something that we would approve, and in the summer season, he could use a boat and access so the pond. And we would be compliant there. Yeah, correct. So the only question is his uh, statement about the stamp plant. That's a moisture project. Yes. You can kick that around yourself, Scott. Yes. So we would, all we would need is stamp plants for okay. this. Right, well, that's Thanks, good Jim. enough. And you can tell him it would. I got it you. Should get approved. We'll be back to you as soon as we can. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank Jim. Thanks. Um, next application is um, Old Harbor Colony Property Owners Association, 8 Canal Way, Hampton Bays, Coal Environmental. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hi, I believe this will be the there, are, there have been at least two other projects that have been done with other consultants here to protect the association property, which is between two uh, bulkheaded uh, yes. Yes. properties. And there's been quite a lot of erosion here, and they're trying to save the, you know, the property for the association because uh, many people in the association do use the property during the summer season. Yes. yes. And oh, really? Yes, he did. <laughs> Right down the road. Just down the road. Yep. Spent a lot of time there. Um, they have tried uh, core logs in the past, and it um, ha they haven't been successful. Core logs. They've tried uh, rocks of certain sizes and part. Certain, yeah, yeah, part, part of, of the way across. And, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, on a southwesterly wind, the uh, waves literally ricochet off a of bulk of the bulkheads there. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll look at it. And then go. trying to stabilize it and at the same time maintain a beach for the community. Yes. It's basically, the existing rocks to be relocated two feet landward of the average mean high water. New five to seven hundred pound uh, rocks be installed at least two feet landward of the average uh, mean high water to uh, co continue a line east and west. Rocks will be dug in two feet 
landward of the average high water with the second line of rocks, five to seven hundred pounds, to be installed directly landward. All rocks will be installed in with a four by uh, four, four inch by six inch crushed stone and uh, backfill with clean sand, Spartana paintings, and Amelia Florida. That are uh, uh, to be <laughs> beach grass. Beach grass, yeah. <laughs> beach grass to be planted. Uh, supplement of the rocks to be uh, installed on crushed stone and filter fabric at corners of the bulkhead elevation not to exceed mean high water. Uh, most seaward existing rocks to be removed. Remaining existing rocks seaward of the average mean high water to be removed. Remain in place an existing intertidal marsh to remain undisturbed. Basically, they're just looking to put these uh, rocks to break up the wave energy and to revegetate the whole entire yep. uh, yes, beach. Yes, and there was a discrepancy with um, the mean high water mark. So the DEC asked that we just uh, revise the plans to bring everything two feet landward, which is why we're moving the most seaward rock. Yeah. So it's a little confusing, but instead yeah, of, you know. <laughs> considerable amount of erosion this winter down there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And just repeat to me what was tried previously, core logs. Yeah, the core logs, and there was, uh, they did put some rocks in, but not the full yeah. way across they did the beach. This, they, so they did the rocks here, sides, and they did the rocks over here, re leaving this open for core logs, and basically with the wave, it doesn't have a lot of wave fetch, but it has a lot of wave energy. And the core locks literally got washed out. Yeah, I'm sure. No weeks on now further south. Okay. We're going to use native rocks. It should be. Because it's a, okay. It's a within 500 Is that feet. See, when I was a kid, the no weeks on was further north. Native round, no sharp edges. Yeah, no sharp edges. Yeah, that's, I would, I'm going to But I think they moved it further. I think they moved the no weeks on further south. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a lot of people. Yes, I think um, subsequently yeah. they'll apply for some sort of platform to go over. Or yeah, that was my rocks. next question yeah. because originally there was a pathway with sand and yeah. allowed the public to access it. If you're going to put rocks along the whole entire stretch, you're going to need a walkway. Yeah. Which should, should, I would say should be part and parcel of the whole project. Yeah, it's not a priority currently. This is more yeah, the priority. And then I think they'll figure out exactly what they okay. want. That was a great do. place for families to yeah. go and enjoy and have picnics on the weekends. And yeah, this is the original it's project a nice here. It is. You can see that. Yeah. The and we're, we're trying to maintain some of the sandy area behind the rocks so they can still have a, you know, have a beach Kids there. area. Yeah. yeah. That was a cool place to go. Yeah, I've been down there quite a, quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> and the no wake zone was further to the north. So. Yes. But I think they changed that. I think they made it that further south to eliminate. Well, this 500 feet is yep. right in. But back there. in the day, it yeah. was it was all the way. The no wake zone started all the way up in here. Okay. And that was back when um, before Spellman's was there. There was older, big wooden boats yep. backed in the other side, and you had Hampton Boat Works on the, uh, on the yep. east side. Yep. A lot of large vessels going in and out of there. Yeah, I think this is a is it well a continuation of a project. Um, because it's like when we originally met down there, the beach was barely eroded, and we tried the boil logs. And unfortunately, you know, they worked only temporarily. And uh, being that the storm elevations have been such that they just wash out because they actually, yeah. without them being immersed in water regularly, they become buoyant and float. <laughs> and the they also, are yeah, the stakes <laughs> are still there. Yeah. They decompose too. Right. Yeah. You good? <coughs> And, and we've received a verbal approval from the DEC. They're just writing up the, the conditions, so they've given us the verbal on the plan. As okay. Is. Yeah, I mean, uh, stamp plans and, uh, well, I mean, are, are the, is there going to be any adjustments to these plans uh, from the DEC? No. I don't believe so. These are the adjustments that already have been made uh, okay. based yeah. on their comments. Exactly. Okay. So basically these plans stamped, and then we'll put it on for the... Uh, General work session. Sure. I mean, the, the general meeting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, it goes to the work session. So yes. Yeah. Just to make sure. Only to inspect the plans. Yes. There's going to be one more work session. Yeah.
make sure the plans are stamped and we have everything in the packet. Okay. And so you okay. need stamp plans for, for vetments like, and uh, anything? For, for any structure that any structure. Any okay. permit that we're reviewing. Gotcha. Landscape park? Landscape park? It's the appropriate designated professional that would be overseeing that type of a plan. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right? Thank, you. Thank you. You are correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Get strong strong pond, 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 pond uh, seventy four Little Lake Road, Shinnecock Hills. Any consultants? Good day. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hello. Rob is not available today. Okay. You want to present your plan? Uh, it's, I mean, it is pretty Over straightforward. Yeah. I mean, I'm here to really answer any questions, clarifications, anything. Uh, you need. want to yeah. give us a detailed uh, play by play on this yeah. whole thing? Sure. It's a uh, really replacement of the docks that are existing there to the same size requirements and also replacement of the bulkhead structure that is there. Um, I did meet Rob. So yep. Dad, yes. uh, a couple times we're trying to basically it's the old uh, course marina best boat works prior to that. Mm -hmm. um, Doc has been there for I don't know 70 years. At least, yeah. Um, so we're just trying to clean it up, uh, bring it up to our s today's standards. Put a buffer there. Um, Good. I'm glad this thing gave up. Yes. Well, the, uh, then keep the configuration of the docks. Yes. As is. Uh, this is the character of the work. Remove and replace in place approximately 102 linear feet of uh, existing timber bulkhead with vinyl bulkhead. Incidentally, dredge uh, 10 feet by 40 foot area um, seaward of the uh, bulkheaded area to the maximum depth of 4 feet below mean low water using approximately 15 cubic uh, yards of sand spoil to, as backfill. Maintain a 10 foot wide gravel buffer landward of uh, the replaced bulkhead. Remove and replace the existing uh, 13 foot. Uh, Timber return and a 13 foot vinyl return along the property line. Remove and replace <coughs> in place the existing 6 by 40, 5 by 51, and 5 by 34 sections of fixed pier dock to uh, 3 by 12 ramps and a 5 by 147, a 5 by 39, a 5 by 6, uh, a 6 by 20, a 5 by 146, and a 5 by uh, 54 floating docks. Remove and replace in place up to 54 feet of existing uh, floating dock tie off piles, um, basically as needed, as depicted on the project plans uh, submitted by N Consultants December 16th, uh, 2021. Most of the pilings that are in there now are creosote pilings. Um, they actually, some of them came from the old Ponco Bridge, uh, so uh, they were repurposed many, many, many <coughs> years ago. So this whole project in general is going to be getting rid of, you know, treated lumber, creosote, and, uh, you know, I think it's a really good project, giving us a buffer, uh, filling in part of a, uh, a man-made uh, launch there, and so that you guys, instead of using a travel lift, you're going to use a forklift, yep. so. You have plans to look at? Yep. That, that component it is going to be to follow. We're waiting on engineering. Okay. We're waiting on the engineering drawings. Yes. Yeah, well, that part, do you, have any, do you have a bigger room? Um, the end of the floats out there are the, are the inside the property line or outside? That's a great question. They, um, <laughs> they, we have they are what they've been for yeah. 70 plus years. Uh, yeah. They, he could have done it. He second or third year of ownership. Yeah. So. I know. Um, you guys do a very good job. Thank you. Um, but it's hard for us to issue a permit if it's over the property line. Understood. The extended no. property line you're talking yeah. about? Yes. You're saying the out, out of, outmost floats? Yeah. Okay. Because then it's your, your and other guy's view shed and also. Right. I know that's the way you're saying on the. The believe, north side? It's been here for around the south. Side. Side. Yeah. yeah. I know the north is within maybe well, the south, based on your drawing here, um, which looks like it's pretty current. Because I asked when we purchased it why the angles are so funny. Is there a survey? Does it show? 
There's definitely, well, we have survey it shows. There's a survey, but it doesn't yeah. show the extended. We didn't do the extended property lines. Well, I think we have to look at that because we help people like down the side cob or cold. You know, you have to be fair to everyone. Sure. Because yeah. it's narrow there. Yeah, it's understood. And yeah, we take care of the gentleman to the south. Yeah. Uh, unless, the the very facility, so. unless they get a permission or covenant from the yeah. neighbor. Or you know. some type of an affidavit. Yeah. Actually, I guess what you're saying. I guess they, you because know. they were pre existing. Well, yeah, it's been there for <laughs> 70 years, to your point. It's like, yeah. you know. But they might not have a permit. Joe could <coughs> get those on without permit. Well, that, that has been the way it was when it was before Joey Core had it. Yeah. When Best had it? When Best, Best had, had it. it. It hasn't changed since. Did they always the, the, have permits? This, the six, um, I don't. I never looked and see if the original permits were in the office. Yeah, from the we just have to be safe, seasons. you know, because we don't want to get ourselves and get him in trouble. With the neighbors. So, if it's been that way for years and years, what's the right mark? What's the right uh, process for this? If um, we can get permission from the neighbors, well, it's a, and it's a, it's a pre-existing commercial exposure. This is not uh, like somebody putting a new dock and yeah. you know right. we've got to site it and everything. It's been going on for seventy years. Yes. But it's not consistent. So well, looking we at it, it's like a pre-existing non-conforming yeah. situation. Right. Yeah. And I so think how that, do we address that? Well, as, as just as such, I would say I mean, Mark's the attorney, but it is pre-existing non-conforming. It's a business that's been operating. You, know, you purchased purchased it that way it's been there I don't have people banging down our doors complaining about this you know we are a maritime uh, community mm -hmm. but just so um, and so yes, so if they ask for a letter of permission yeah. 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 that's what I noted down well, well, Mark, I don't know what your thoughts yeah. are on all this discussion but yeah I mean make sure we protect I'm us. definitely looking to vary from the, uh, the blue book requirements mm -hmm. um, uh, letter of permission might help um, with regard to the current homeowner, if they stay the current homeowner, I'm not so sure how much that will help. Um, I, I'd probably recommend following the blue book. Um, I don't know what procedure you have for submittal of variances, but um, regardless, it, it's, it still certainly looks like the north side is over the, the property line as you extend it out to the water. I don't know about the south side. So uh, we would need. Uh, I would hold it. Plan uh, on, on a survey, we would need uh, the uh, I want to do the uh, extended property extended lines property line. out. So, s see, I would look to see if there's an original permit for that. Or best. Might be a permit back in uh, the, the file. From the yeah, we would have to do uh, uh, some reading. Probably. Can you go back on the overhead shots? Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, in aerials, we can, yeah. but in permits, we have to look at the where do you want to go? Yeah, so you back ask Rob if he can do a title search back to the yeah. 50s. That would be a good starting point. I know mm -hmm. it's a lot of work, but, you know, in order for us to move I forward. I know our neighbors will give us a big kiss if we can replace the docks. Yeah. <laughs> they just can't stand there. looking at them, and I, neither can we, obviously. But yeah, it's, they're pretty bad. So in the same footprint, though, is that what you're talking about? Exactly. But yeah, it's just right, so, but, uh, but they're still going to be looking at docks. They're just tired of looking at oh, see old 20, docks. They want to look at yeah. new docks. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Old was 10 years yeah. ago. <laughs> well, you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting at? Because, yeah. because the trustees, are, you know, they, they take no. into consideration, uh, totally. you've heard the word view shit. Yeah. So, yeah. so the bottom line is, you know. That's 20 years ago? Yeah, this is 2001. Yeah, so it has so, changed. Yeah. So go back um, 10 more years. That's 2022. Well, it looks like you pulled that one section in on the Yeah, north. that couldn't be done in a winter time. Yeah. Well, you had to fix a pole. Takes a, he didn't walk too fast. No. Oh, so it's, it's... When's that, James? That's back a ways. That's um, 96, but the, you can't go off the tax map lines. Right? It's they're, they're inaccurate. Correct, but yeah. right. Just looking at that, the layout yeah, of the docks layout, so, yeah. and, and sort of where it comes. Well, that's is definitely. Go back one more or two more. Uh, 94 is usually pretty bad. So. Uh, yeah. We'll go 84. That's 84 is pixelation. 84. It's a hammerhead shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 84? It was just. Or hammerheads in the bay. That's in the 70s, isn't it? 76, yeah. 76. So it looks like between 84 and 94 was when they. Um, Made the changes. So, so there's permits for these. Yes. I I don't know. We, we know we need to know okay, that. I can look into it. We need to know that. Who would have opened at that point? Would that still have been vests? Or 
probably. Like Joe, and that was oh, and in the 80s, 80s, that would probably be Joe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That I was Joe so. at that point in time, I think. I, it was close. Close. Yeah. close. Did you, when you bought, in purchasing, did you mm -hmm. do any title search mm -hmm. on the docs and everything and permits and stuff? Um, I know we usually do a very deep dive. I'm sure. Uh, that's why I mean, I, I think it'd be going back mentally this far. I, I'm not, I can't speak to that, but. Can, can you get Yeah, definitely have it noted down yet. Yeah. If, if, if there's permits, there's no problem. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're just trying you to. still want the, you know, the affidavits from the neighbors. To make I, would, I would wait until. Yeah, let's, let's yeah, see, yeah, let's see what, got. Let's okay. see what was permitted that originally, and then we'll work out from there. Wasn't, wasn't Joe in the, on the Shinnecock Canal in the in the early Mariner's 80s? Coast. Yeah, he was in the 70s. Yeah. But yeah. he was there probably through because I remember when I was a consul in the 70s. In the that was 80s. in the late 70s, heading into the early 80s. Yes. I think he was still there in the early 80s. Yes. Um, and then Mariner's Cove got sold. Right, and it, it was probably somewhere in the early 80s, right? Yeah. So. Well, did he have them both, or did he just no, have he one? Had one? So then it was probably best. Yeah, it was best back then. Yeah, it was best. So that's why I said a tile search with names. We could look up yep. the permits, and then we can get a you know a timeline of what has transpired here over the last few decades. Okay. Well, ancient history. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might be able to check with him. I, he might be able to based on my own age, I don't know if I'm going to call it ancient oh, history. <laughs> 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 it's got a foil. Yep. Okay. Great. Appreciate all right, you all. all right, thank you, Ryan. Thank, thank you for coming thanks down. For yes, absolutely. Yep. Thank thank you very much. Nice to see you. All right, we have an executive eleven, so okay. We're trustee um, Welker. Yep, uh, three sixty one Dune Road LLC, Conic Environmental. Let me just double check this, but they sent an email the other day requesting that this be held. Um, James, yep. was there any follow up? That that you uh, saw. I, didn't, I didn't see any. I have no problem holding it yeah. since we're not, we can't discuss yeah. it. So, um, this is snow fencing, um, so it's no fencing installation, so we'll hold that. Uh, project 287 LLC modification at 4585 uh, Noyak Road. Um, Mr. Halstead Wells, if you'd like to come forward, that would be great. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Do you want to sign in? Sign in. I was wondering why we're still yeah. staying here. Yes, and then maybe you could give a, a uh, just a brief description of what you've okay. encountered here, time-wise and permit-wise. So this is a this is a project that was previously. Um, permitted by the trustees, but then Mr. Halstead went through. Go ahead, you can carry on if you well, like. Uh, I've finally got everything together, uh, but it uh, meaning the approvals of the, the what was the delay was the Army Corps of Engineers and the uh, Department of State, which the Army Corps of Engineers needed in order to. Do their, um, so I'm basically, uh, I've run through my four um, uh, permits Renewals. and the, the exploration and um, I'm asking for, uh, on this same plan, just one more year here to get the thing. Now that I have everything together, the, the, uh, everything together I guess would mean the modification to the original thing that was required by the Army Corps of Engineers and the, the Department of State. Okay. So I'm fine with this. There, It's been a modification that's been requested. The um, DEC had a couple changes, um, but nothing significant. Um, they've all been made. Um, proposed fixed stock is minimum four feet above wetlands. Uh, access ramp is replaced with tiered landings and steps, and uh, seasonal aluminum ramp is replaced by one with a wood frame and uh, open fiberglass mesh. So they don't so want an aluminum ramp. They want... Actually, they didn't object to that. It was one of the objections that one of the neighbors made. Uh, 
and the Army Corps said, what are you going to say about this objection we got? And I said, actually, I agree. <laughs> I'd be happy to put in a, uh, something other than, and I learned that there was other ramps. You didn't have, you weren't stuck with an aluminum ramp. Yeah. So it was in response right, to. Right, so you just, yeah, no, I understand. I yeah. just was wondering if they, what their rationale was. Yeah, because no, yeah no, no, it wasn't, that wasn't there. I was just meeting some neighbor objection. So this Fair is. Enough. Time is of the essence, basically, because. Um, is it a renewal or a modification? It's, not, it's a modification. Yeah, so they, he did four renewals already. Um, okay. So he's up on his renewals. Um, after we talked, he said that he, if, if he gets his modification, he's going to try to get the work done before the permit expires. Is that correct? Yes. Right, Mr. Holstead, you're going to get the you're going to get the work done. As soon as possible. Now that you've been, yeah, yeah, I'll everything else move is forward. in line. I mean, besides that, the damn cost has doubled since <laughs> what yeah. it was <laughs> when I started this process. Mm -hmm. So I need a little bit of put together. But yes, as soon as possible. So yeah, I'm good. Okay. So okay. we could please. Thank you. So we need yeah. Thank you. We have stamp. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For the modification. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Trustee Parrish. Yes, we have uh, Christopher Walters, 21 Baycrest Avenue, West Hampton, Land Use Ecological mm -hmm. Services. How you doing, guys? Good. 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 I think it's a pretty simple application. Um, it seems to uh, meet the Blue Book standards. The total length of the dock uh, uh, structure from high water is um, 100 feet. Um, you can see from the depths, um, we do have it chopped. It gets to two feet of water, uh, but just barely. Uh, one eight, two one, uh, 24. Right. Pardon me? Chalk on a cross. Yes, I mean, I'll make sure that we do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. but other than that, I, I think it meets uh, all, your, all your standards. Well, James, what were the issue, two issues you said? Um, so, in the past, you guys haven't really gone under two feet with chalks um, that I'm aware of. Uh, so, the inside of this float is 1.4, one which would be low for chocks, but in, in the past. Um, I think that if potentially if you make it a T or an L, yeah, so that'll get you out a little further and keep that within 100 feet and you'll be up more towards like no. 1.9. I, no, I have no problem. So at least with chocks in here at 1.9, closer to two feet, um, yeah. rather than 1.4, because then you're going to have to float sitting up high with the low water underneath. Yeah. I don't know how safe. So that we'll just be. extend the fixed dock out and then put a T. That would probably. If that's you know, I don't know that you guys with no that. float. Yeah, right. With, with no float or with the float? Oh no, with the float. With the float. With the, the float. He wants to have the float in a T. Oh, T. Right. With the chocks okay. underneath the boat. Right. But that'll get that'll get to two feet okay. at the, at the uh, or closer to two feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger than that. And, and actually, the boat would be even deeper than that. And what's is there a pier line here? It's a hundred feet. Okay. So you just and, make, then, it and this the, still works with the third and third and third. <coughs> yeah. It's yes. It's pretty wide. And it looks canal. consistent with uh, others in the canal. I mean according to the this survey here. What's that? It's in Baycrest. Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam. And there's no submerged aquatic like eelgrass vegetation yeah. on the yeah. bottom of this. So. There's a pretty healthy natural shoreline. Yes. Yeah, no, we're not proposing anything along the shoreline. Well, no. if it meets Blue Book at that stage, you just got to revise your plans. Yeah, no, we'll do that. We'll, we'll revise the plans. So, if, uh, based upon that, I, don't know, I guess you're going to get, well, you'll have to come, yeah, we'll we'll have to come yeah. back here anyway. Yep. So. Okay. 
Okay. No, no problem. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Have a great day. You Thank you. We need Stanford Friends School. Once we look at this again, I'm going to ask the Stanford Friends for the final. Well, they stamp I always need stamp plans for the final. We have stamp these originals that they sent us to stamp so they can stamp the new ones too. Right. Okay. Revision. We'll hold pending the new plans and commercials. Yes. Now you got another first coastal here. Another couple of first coastals. Two first coastals. That we saved your seaport. Thank you. <laughs> Kept it warm. Thank you. All right. Start with uh, the nine Apicot Point Lane, mm -hmm. which was a modification renewal. Right. Uh, that's when we where we separated the two projects, the bulkhead project to the dredging. Yeah. Um, and we're just looking to finalize this bulkhead project, which has already been inspected, and uh, close it out. The so modification the was just to <coughs> add the um, language about the buffer. That's right. Um, 500 square feet of Spartina. The Spartina. Right. Yeah, we so took when it. they submitted the application, it left off that section of it, and we just had them add it. Okay. When we did the class. So that's, yeah, that's what, right, so that's all this is about. It's my first. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> all right. Thank you. be fairly simple. Yeah. And the and next ten. one is the seven Tanner's Neck Lane in West Hampton. This was before the trustees on October 12th. And they've made some revisions. You want to tell us about that, Bill? Yeah. Um, so we relocated the dock to the east side of the property and connected it with the existing deck. Uh, Move the proposed ramp and float, and instead just proposing a, a straight catwalk with an L shape. Uh, and then we reduced the length to extend only 100 feet out from uh, mean high water. Can you zoom in on that a little bit, please? Yep. So here's a uh, updated plan. I only have one, unfortunately. So this is a long catwalk over the marsh? Yes. Okay. You got a ladder on there? Um, I usually put ladders in. I'm not sure if it's okay. shown on the detail. And did we do an advisory no, it's letter on, on this? The detail. We could certainly add that. No, we didn't do an advisory letter. How this long, how long is that catwalk about how high is that catwalk about me and I want it? Quite quite long. Yeah. Is this the village of Watch Hampton or no? This um, is Tanner's Neck, I believe, is not in the village. Right. No, it's not. Well the whole structure is three hundred and nine feet, so it's two hundred and nine feet. Other th there's other catwalks like that because I remember I did one. Yeah, there's a bunch. We did one, in the, in, we did one in up there in the drainage. Um, the mm -hmm. yeah, that was at Big Crest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a big thing. pretty limited uh, access, and this kind of requires us to be right in there. Yeah, right in that corner. So it's just uh, north of that, the property that sticks out with the all kind of, oh no, I'm sorry, it's uh, looking at this one here. So it is a lot of marsh that has to go over that. So yeah. There's no other way to access it because it's all marsh there. Yeah. I walk the, I walk the property, it's marsh. Yeah. Yeah. Were there <coughs> waders? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> I wore boots. You need to get waders. <laughs> There's a mosquito ditch that goes way up land there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It weaves all the way up. Um, it's consistent with the uh, docks over marsh. So um, well, the other properties are improved right up to the buffer, right, right up to the, the bay there. there. So yeah, this, this, is this is the one of the few that has the buffer of the natural more marsh area. So it's right next to the old bay club. What do you think? Exactly. Crash? As far as you remember that, <laughs> well, I was up there on Friday. I the the it out so and uh, looked at all of these areas. Like yeah, it's that's too work. funny. Dang. People forget about that place, yeah. as they should. Maybe. <laughs> a, uh, 
was your letter or no? There's so, a fair amount of, I'm sorry. No, no, forgive me, I interrupted you. Uh, there's a fair amount of, I mean, if we're looking for a couple things, the least amount of disturbance of vegetation in order to get to the highest, the deepest water. We've, we've done that here because this is the deepest water in order to get out to it. But I think it's still a good idea to get the advisory letter. I think out of respect, we should ask. Extensive. Yeah, let's just do that. And it's all light penetrating that, wait, decking that you're putting there, so that non whatever is there, is, yeah. it's going to yeah. flourish. Okay, so that's so I'll hold it for advisory letter. Okay, other than that, you're good with everything. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yes. I, I think it's just uh, understood. Yeah. Just the consideration is substantial. Yes, I understand. Yes, yes. Uh, so make sure we're meeting everybody's yes. concerns and that's it. Quick. Yes. Go. Okay. Yep. This last one is thank you, Billy. You're welcome. Um, of course. Barla Vento LLC, 23 Wheaton Way. This was just, we didn't have stamp plans last time. Right. And you got the plans in, um, so we can move this ahead. Fantastic. This we discussed last time. It's yes. Yep. Yes. Of course, so. a little point. So we exactly. advanced that. Yep. And then we are scheduled for executive session, like, momentarily. So yep. I think the smart thing to do is to adjourn the work session and go into the executive session for the discussion of Okay, Sorry? I will just say um, Meet Cox Bay is being open today. What um, time are they going to open that? Yeah. Uh, just after high tide at noonish. Okay. So, um, and um, SAG closed itself naturally in the past few days. So, just okay. a little update there. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Thank you. So again, I'll make a motion to adjourn our work session Second. here. Second. And go into executive session for the purposes of discussing. Uh, Personnel, potential uh, litigation issues. Um, yes. So seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Meeting closed. Let's go to the second.